Let's learn by example, and in this example we're going to create a French cleat sample design pot plant holder. So we can see a picture of the pot plant we're going to try and hold here. And the simple idea here is to create a circular uh, platform where, oh, sorry, a platform, sorry, with a circular hole in it, uh, which the pot plant will sit in, and I can see there's a lip there. Step one is to get key measurements. Uh, the key measurements for this is that there's a 100 millimeter circle, I've measured that, and basically ready to um, put a 100 mil hole inside a squarish piece and then create some uh, cleats for it to go onto the cleat system. Step two involves opening a new on-shape document and setting up material thickness. Material thickness in our case will be three millimeters. Uh, the reason why we set up a material thickness variable is so that we can change it if needs be to tune it to our specific material that we're going to create it out of. So if it doesn't work at three millimeters, we can change it, for example, to 2.95 or 2.9 in order to get that perfect fit with our material. And that's because some materials say that they're three millimeters, but they're not quite, or because the laser pr process actually cuts out a bit more or a bit less uh, than other materials. So for example, with plastic, it might cut a bit more out than it does when it uses wood or vice versa. Uh, and it's just a matter of experimentation in getting the right material thickness. So let's uh, get into there and set a new material thickness. So here we are in our onshape file. We're going to create a new document. Uh, and our new document is going to be called, um, we'll call it French Cleat Pot Plant Holder. And hit OK. So once the document opens, uh, we will set our first variable or our only variable for this one and set the variables up here in the plane. There's a little arrow next to it pointing down that will open a new submenu and that will become variable. Now that we've got that there, we're going to call this variable material thickness and we're going to set that to be three millimeters, which is our default value, uh, which we may have to tune later. So I'm going to press on tick, and we now have our default value set up. Step three involves creating the part that will hold the plant, and my idea is to cut out a circle in a square or rectangular part and have the pot plant sit in there. You can see there's 100 mils around the side, and I think it gets up to about 140 mils in its widest depth, so we need to take that into consideration as well. So we'll create a part that will hold the plant nicely. So we're going to start our design by creating the shelf that holds the pot plant. And as we've suggested, the shelf that holds the pot plant is going to have a circle in the middle of it, which will be cut out. And then we'll basically have around that a square uh, in order to hold uh, that circle in place. Uh, and that can be the shelf. So we're going to look at that down from the top. So let's create a sketch on the top plane, so we're going to hover over until the top plane has an orange highlight around it, and we're going to click, and then we're going to press over here to view from the top. The first thing I'll do is create a center point circle, with the center point being the origin point in the middle. It's important that we wrap this around the origin point for this particular design, and I'm going to click, I'm going to move around. Uh, I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm just clicking, and I'm then going to leave that there like that. I can now set my dimension by clicking on the dimension tool and then clicking on the outside of the circle. And I'm going to bring out the dimension here. I'm not clicking and dragging, I'm clicking and clicking. Clicking and dragging is something you rarely do in this software. So we're going to go 100 millimeters is going to be the size of my circle. I've also decided that my circle or my shelf will be about 150 millimeters wide. So I'm going to click on a corner rectangle and I'm going to draw a rectangle all the way around the outside. Because it's going to be a square, I'm going to use the rule that says, or the constraint that says that sides are going to be equal. So I'm click on the equal sign. I'm going to click on this side and this side. That makes that square or a thing square because two sides are equal and those sides all line up. 
So now I'm going to set the dimensions of just one side to be 150. I now need to line this square up with the middle. The easy way to do this is to draw a line, which is a construction line. So line, then construction. Then I'm going to find the halfway point. The midpoint comes when I've got a little square there. And you can see the little icon in gray that pops up just below with a dot in the middle is the midpoint icon. And I need to zoom out a bit to see the bottom. And let's find the midpoint icon. There it is there as well on the bottom. So now that I've done that, I'm going to change my rule to be the midpoint rule. I'm going to click on the origin point, and then I'm going to click on that construction line I just created. And this is going to be the size uh, of my shelf. So I'm going to press tick in order to create that. And then I'm going to look at this from a bit of an angle. Um, and I'm going to use the extrude tool and just click on the outside so you can see I'm extruding everything but the round circle. And the depth is going to be material thickness. And I'm going to press tick. Now, just looking at this from the front, so this is now the front here. I'm going to probably put, before I do anything, just to make a little bit of a statement about the shape of this thing, I'm going to put a curve on there and there, so this is what we call the fillet tool, and I'm going to put maybe a 15 millimeter radius on there, just to press OK on that. I press tick, and that will be um, uh, that will be basically what I'm going to hold up as um, uh, the front of my thing. So it's going to stick out a little bit and have that nice round sort of edge to it there in order to sort of try and match the roundness of the actual pot. So now that I've done that, uh, I'm going to get ready to create the next part. We're now going to create some side with hooks and the sides with hooks will probably sit higher than the pot plant at the rear and come down in triangles in order to manage the weight of the pot plant. So uh, let's actually have a look at how we might do that. Okay, this part takes some thinking about. I'm going to create um, uh, the sides of my particular um, uh, holder. And these are going to have the hooks on them that are going to hook into the French cleat section. So they're going to hold all of the weight. So I need to design these well. I'm going to create my sketch on this side here. So let's actually choose sketch. And I'm going to create it on this side here. So we've got that sketch there, sketch two, and let's look at it from side on now. So I can see they've got, they've got this point here, uh, and then I've got a round happening. So I'm gonna use that point as my reference point. I'm gonna go both up and down in order to get the full strength of this. My up is going to be a sort of an interesting shape, but my down is pretty much just going to be a uh, a triangle. So let's get the downside first. I'm going to draw a line from that point there all the way down to a point below here. You can see how I moved up to there to collect that thing and move down and I've now got uh, my angle there. And I'm going to bring my line back up to here and lock that in place. You can see now I've got this. Now I'm still drawing a line so I'm going to press the escape key to uh, not allow that any further. But I am going to set an angle here, and the angle I want to see between here and here is, I'm going to say 30 degrees. Now 30 degrees gives me a bit more strength. Some of the weight is going to be pushed down onto this device here. Now I don't like it being a pointy tip here, so I'm just going to draw a quick line across here, from here like to here, like so. Just a straight line press escape and I'm pretty happy with that one there. I'm just going to set the height of this from this point here to this point here being 70 and then I can trim these guys off here because I don't need them anymore. So that's going to be, I'll get rid of that one there too. No, I can't. I'll press escape. I'll click on that and press delete.
So that's gone now. So I've got that one there. Uh, it's basically saying that this one here needs some definition. I think you'll find it needs to be set to be vertical. Now we've got that part at the bottom in order to create this part. Now I want to sort of, that's an underside. You're not going to see that so much, but I do want to create a bit more of a feature here. So what I'm going to do for the top is I'm going to create a line going straight up here. And the line's going to go straight up at a certain distance. Then I'm going to press escape. And then I'm going to create a line also going up. So I'm going to zoom out over here. I'm going to zoom in over here. And I'm going to create a line going up a certain distance, like so. And I'm going to have a line going across a certain distance, like so. I'm going to press escape. And from here, I'm going to use a sort of a curved shape. So I might use the spline tool to go from here to here to there like so. That gives me the, the sort of shape I'm looking for. I'm gonna press escape now. And now that I've got that curve, I'm pretty happy with that sort of looking shape. I now need to create my hook. Now my hook is gonna have a lot of pressure on it. So I'm going to create a rectangle up here to hold a fair bit of weight. And I'm going to then, I'll zoom in here. I'm going to set the dimensions of this to be exactly 12, like so. And I'm going to set the dimensions of this one here. Let's just say that it'd be 20. 20 mils is a fair amount of material. And now I need to just create my little angle down here. Now if I create my angle down here to go out, straight down to about there, and up to about here at a perfect angle like so, and I'm now going to press on my dimension here and set that dimension to be 12. That will be a 45 degree angle perfectly. I'm going to get rid of some stuff here. Now you can see it's blue and I don't normally like to leave the line blue, but I'm pretty happy with these sets here. I might set this dimension here though, uh, also to be 12. Um, and I'm pretty now happy with that sort of shape. I can tune that shape a little bit once I make the 3D object. So I'm going to press tick here. Now I'm going to have to extrude a few things. So let's look at this from a bit of an angle and start seeing what I need to extrude. So let's click check on this one. And I need, this is important, I need that little shape there. I need that part there. And I'm going to go around to the back now. I need that little angle there and I need all of that and I need it to be in on this part here so it's going the wrong way like so and it's now going to need to be material thickness and press enter so you can see now I've got this part sitting in there like so uh, and that is going to be holding uh, all of the weight so Let's uh, have a look at um, that as a shape and see if I'm happy with it. And one thing I did there, and you can see there's only one part here. I need there to be two parts. So I'm gonna go back up to this extrude. I'm gonna double click into it. I should have cho chosen new. And now I have a new part there. So if I turn off part one and I turn it back on. So I'm gonna right click here and rename this part the uh, shelf, and I'm going to right click on this part here and rename that the side. So I'm spending a bit of time on my side just to get it right. Now I want this to be a little bit smoother, so I'm going to sort of put a bit of a round there, and I'm going to also put a bit of a round there. Um, I said there, there we go. And uh, now 15 is probably a bit much for this one, so I'm going to go to 10. And that's good. I'm going to press on the tick button. So I've got that part there and that's looking quite nice. So that's going to hold up a bit of the weight there and this is going to prop up a bit of the weight here as well. So I'm pretty happy with the way that that's going to look. Um, what I might do, just to make it a little bit less of a, a physical shape, is I might create a sketch on here and I'm going to uh, look at it from the side view and I'm going to create a triangle in here, like so. 
like so and like so just to tick this out and let's just look at the, the dimensions of this this one here to this one let's actually make this one starters we'll make this one parallel this one here is parallel to this one here that's better so the dimensions i'm going to use are from this one here to this one here i want it to be 15 mil okay that's made that huge so what i'm going to do when this happens is you set all the dimensions and then you change them so that dimension there is good press enter setting the dimension and then i'll change them that dimension there enter so I want that dimension there to be 15, this dimension here to be 15, and this dimension here to be 15. And that's not gonna take much out, so let's actually take this one down to 10 because it's actually not holding as much weight as this one. So that's going to look good, and I'm gonna press on the tick button there, I'm gonna use the extrude button, click on that, and hit remove, and that's you're gonna make that a little bit less of a presence. Still gonna have the bigger side on here. I might wanna to try to take a bit of part out of there as well, uh, but I'm not gonna do that right now. So that is my part. And what I need to do now is I need to duplicate it. Actually, I'm not gonna duplicate it. Uh, I will worry, it's, well, yes, well actually we will, we'll duplicate it. We're gonna use the mirror tool. And to mirror that, I'm going to click on the part that I'm going to mirror. Um, hang on, I didn't mean that. This entities to mirror is what I'm going to click on. And I'm going to click on the entity I'm going to mirror. Then I'm going to click on this red thing here that says mirror plane. And I'm going to choose the right plane. And that's going to put another one over the other side. I'm going to make sure it's a new. And then I'm going to press tick. And now I have rename. I'll call this side two and press tick. So we've got that part there. Um, so I now need to uh, think about uh, some more design features that I'm going to do. Let's see what we can do with that. Step five, we're going to make sure that there is enough strength in our system in order to hold this pot plant nicely. So let's analyze it and see if we need to add any parts or take away parts in order to increase the strength of our system. So let's look at how we can make this stronger. The first thing I'm gonna to do to make it stronger is I'm gonna put a back plane down the bottom to stop this from sort of wanting to cave in. So this might wanna push in towards that right plane and this one will wanna push in or out so it'll start wobbling. If I put a big panel in here, that big panel will stop it from uh, wanting to do that. I'm gonna put the panel inset a bit um, because I can. So I'm going to draw it on the right side here by drawing a sketch on the right side and I'm just going to draw my panel and I'm going to put it in like that. So I'm going to have a few gaps but that's fine and I'm going to use the material thickness to set all my settings up on this. So my dimension from here up to this point here is going to be material thickness and press enter. Um, my dimension from here to here is also going to be material thickness. Okay, and my distance from here to here is also going to be material thickness. Okay, and now I'm gonna try and put this in the middle. The way I can put this in the middle is a bit tricky uh, but pay attention, I'm going to use a line tool. It's going to be a construction line. I'm going to go from the middle point here to the middle point of this line here. And then if I make that vertical, that will be in the perfect middle. How tricky is that? That's pretty tricky. Um, took me ages to figure out that I could do that. But anyway, I'm going to try and zoom in. I don't like the way that the zoom works, but it's to do with where you put things um, so let's zoom in here so we're going to move this so that we can see it I'm actually going to look at it from this side I'm happy with that panel it's going to be a quite a large panel but I'm going to extrude it 
at the moment it's sticking out. I'm going to zoom around to this other side and I'm going to go up to face. It's going to be a new part and it's going to go to this face here like so. And we have therefore a large panel sitting in place uh, that's going to basically add um, a lot of strength to this whole system. So now I'm going to press on the tick button here to accept that part. So I'm going to rename that part the uh, lower rear panel. So the lower rear panel is quite large, but you're not really going to see it. It's going to sit in behind the plant. Um, so it's not going to be much of a feature. What I am going to do is I'm going to bring in a part. You notice that it actually doesn't quite go up to here very well. So I'm going to bring in uh, what I'll call um, some, some sort of staunchion from this part to this part. It's like a little triangle. Let's turn off the side views here and we'll see what I mean. So we've got basically a little part that we're going to draw up from. If I look at it from a little side view here to here to hold it in place. I'm going to do that by creating, first of all, a plane. And it's going to be what type of plane called an offset plane. I'm going to create that plane off this plane here. And I'm going to move it so that it's in so that where I'm happy with it, so um, yeah, I'm going to go in uh, 24 millimeters and press enter. That's a good place for that plane to be and press tick. I'm just guessing this, I'm just eyeballing it, but I'm going to draw uh, my triangle or my triangular section on this side. So I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to draw my plane in by creating a whole bunch of lines. So before I can do that, you can see that I can't actually see any of these edges in here. I need these edges to be here. So I'm going to use the project and I'm going to use this one and this one and this one and this one. So all four lines are now part of my sketch. I'm then going to use the line tool. And I'm going to go across from about here across to there, which is a three millimeter line. It's going to go up here to here like so. Then it's going to go up straight up. It's going to go along and it's going to go down and it's going to go across and back up. So I've got a shape that goes around and across and everywhere like so. I'm going to make this line parallel to this line by using the rules. And then I'm going to set my dimension here. And I'm going to set it to be something significantly bigger than it was, 20 millimeters. So now if I look at that from an angle, um, that's not too bad. But what I'll do is I'm going to set the dimension from this distance here dimension from this distance here, this distance here, up at an angle. And I'm also going to set that 20 millimeters to see how that goes. Okay, um, so I've now got that. Let's look at it from the left view. That is now set in place. So that's all set. I've got 20 millimeters uh, and 20 millimeters. It's going to hold that nicely in place. What I will do, however, is I'm going to create little rectangles in here like so because I want this to be sort of like a finger joint. And let's make those rectangles be five millimeters. So escape dimension, this line here to this line here, be five millimeters. This line here to this line here, be five millimeters. This one here to this one here, it's gonna be five millimeters. This one here and this one here, it's also going to be five millimeters. So if I turn off the shelf and the lower rear panel, I now have this strange looking shape here. I could go and cut things off, but I don't need to. I'm going to press on the tick button here and I'm going to look at this from the left view 
and I'm now going to extrude that out plus this little bit here plus this little bit here but it's going to go out material thickness and now if I turn everything back on once I tick this uh, it's a new fill thing I'm going to turn the shelf and the back panel lower rear panel back on you can see that I've got a part sitting in there uh, ready to go and that's just going to add that little bit of extra strength um, for this part here so it's not going to sag as much I could put another one in the middle but what I will do is I'm going to mirror I'm not going to do that for the sake of this tutorial but I could put another one in the middle I'd have to redraw it completely but I'm going to put mirror this one um, so I'm going to mirror that thing I'm going to round it with the mirror plane of the right one there and I'm going to press tick so now I've got those ready to go. Uh, the next um, part is, I think, to create the finger joints. In step six, we're going to do finger joints. The finger joints will enable our part to go together uh, with minimal glue and hold it with a lot more strength than it would be just joining with glue. So I'm going to create the finger joints in this part here. And in this part here, I've already actually created little finger joints in those little parts there. So let's actually enact those finger joints by using the Boolean. And the Boolean is going to use a subtract and I'm going to use as my tools that little part there and this other part here, part five. And my targets are going to be the lower rear panel um, and the shelf. Now I've got some sides, so two parts here that aren't labeled. Um, and I'm going to press tick and that's going to basically make it so that when I uh, turn off part five and part six which I should have labeled but I'm not going to now you see that I've got little cutouts there ready for those parts to go in just to add that little bit of strength to this whole system now let's draw I'm going to turn off um, the two sides now let's draw the finger joints in our parts so let's actually go to the top view and do the first one. I'm going to get rid of the lower rear panel and we'll just do the finger joints in the top one. Now we'll know that there is actually, let's create a sketch on the top. Now we know that we've got that part there, but I'm going to actually do my first little joint or in cut a little bit away from there. And I'm going to draw another one here. And I'm going to draw another one here. And I'm going to draw another one here. And I'm going to draw another one from that corner there, like so, uh, so that we've got that many parts uh, cut out. And I actually should have drawn another one here. So I'm going to draw a really tiny one here. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I should have an odd number. So I'm going to draw another really tiny one just here. Now, the size of these don't matter too much because what I'm going to now do is I'm going to set my definitions up. Um, uh, so I'm going to set up my dimensions from here to here, leave that out there and press enter. Just accept them for the time being, here to here and press enter and accept them for the time being. Just keep going and this just holds them all in place while I make adjustments. I find that if you try and do this one at, like, one at a time, it doesn't create a nice one. So now I'm going to use the equals, um, oh, let's sit there like that, press enter. I'm now going to use the, the equal rule and set them to all equal. So this line here is equal to this line here. This line here is equal to this line here. This line here is equal to this line here. This line here is equal to this line here. And that's, see how that's blown out there? Um, so we probably need to think about that. Press control Z. I'm going to make equals rule again this line here is equal to this line here and then this line here is equal to this line here and that's seems to have figured that out I think I missed that one there now they're all in place so you got to try and until you get that right now that I've done that I'm going to press escape so that I've got my arrow key back I'm going to double click on these and try and make them 10 make them all 10 
Okay, that's made them nice and all 10. And I want as many of these as evenly spaced as I can. I'm now going to get this distance here to this distance here to be material thickness. Okay, and then I'm going to use the vertical alignment tool to click on this one, to this one, this one, to this one. You see some of them have already lined up. And this one to this one, and this one to this one. This can be a frustrating process and sometimes it's easier just to set them off nicely. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line and the line is going to be a construction line and it's just going to go from the midpoint to there like so. And I'm going to press escape. While I'm in the sketch tool I'm going to use the mirror tool and I'm going to select the mirror line so it says select mirror line. Now I'm going to select the entities to be mirrored and it's all of these things here, and now they're across there. How good is that? And I'm going to press tick. So that is going to be uh, my fingers for there. So I'm now going to select this to extrude. I'm going to select the faces to extrude the same way I selected before that lot there. And I'm going to select that lot there. I should have 10 of them now. Um, so now I'm going to use the remove tool and I'm going to press tick and that didn't work. And why didn't that work? Let's just go into the extrude and it says that there's nothing in the merge scope. The merge scope needs to have something in it. So now if I click on that and then press tick, still not happening. Um, let's just go add and see what happens then. No, I've got too many things in here. I need to manually select things. So let's manually select them. It's so annoying. Okay, so I'm selecting things. Be this one, this one. They should be removed, by the way. That one, 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 and that one. And now I'm going to press tick. So now I've got that part there. That was more difficult than it needed to be. Let's now do that to the lower rear panel as well. Lower rear panel doesn't quite need the same sort of uh, amount because it's just there for um, uh, a bit of strength, but we're going to put in a panel here and we're going to draw in. Let's have a three, one and two. And from the bottom up there, three uh, and then we're going to let's just draw them over here manually one make sure that we don't lock it to the middle two and three and let's start by using some dimensions again dimension from here to here and press enter to accept it dimension from here to here press enter to accept it now we're going to make these things equal one to this one and this one to this one and then we're going to press escape and we'll change these and we'll make that 15 and we'll make this one 15 and then we're going to make this one from here to here to be material thickness and then we're going to use the vertical tool to set this one from here to here and this one from here to here and then we're going to use the horizontal tool. Let's just select this one from here all the way to this one over here. This one here all the way to this one over here. This one here all the way to this one over here. This one here all the way to this one over here. And then we'll use the horizontal tool. Sorry, the vertical tool. This one to this one. This one to this one. And finally, we'll set this distance from here to here, remember we're click click clicking, we're not double clicking, to three millimeters. And now we have all those ready to go. So now we're going to extrude and we're going to remove and we're going to click on one at a time and press tick. So now if I turn everything back on, we're almost ready to do this. So now we need to do our subtraction because you can see here that it's a bit sort of dodgy because we haven't done the subtraction. So let's do our subtraction, which is a Boolean operation. Uh, so we click on Boolean. We're going to do a subtract. Our tools are this one, 
and this one and if you can't select it you can always select it from here because you've labeled it and our targets are the two sides side one and side two and we're going to keep the tools and we're going to press tick so now if we turn off our shelf we can see that we've got holes in there and our lower rear panel also has holes in there so that is going to print or cut nicely and hopefully that will withstand the weight of the item that we're holding up and will be wide enough for it to sit in there nicely and set it off nicely as a nice display item so let's just look at that from a bit of a distance okay that's looking quite okay i'm pretty happy with that so now we're going to um, go into our last bit or last couple of bits which is to actually export the files we should now be ready to export our parts. So um, exporting our parts uh, involves exporting them as DXF files, which we can then take into Adobe Illustrator and set up for laser cutting. Now, while I'm sure that there are symmetrical pieces in this, like this is the same as this piece, um, I'm gonna export one for each part. So let's do this systematically because this is a slightly complicated um, uh, set up so we're going to make sure that we've got one per part. So I'm going to work through systematically um, The first one I'm going to do is the shelf So I'm going to hover over the shelf. I'm not going to select it. I'm going to right click straight away and go export as DXF I'm going to export the shelf and it's going to be I'll call this Pot plant so I can know what I'm talking about pot plant shelf and hit export. Now that I've uh, exported the shelf, I'm going to hide it. I'm going to export this side now, so make sure that this is the side, hover over it, that's the side I want, I can see it's highlighted. So I'm going to right click over this one and export the shelf or the side, I'm going to change that to pot, plant, side and export. I'm going to turn that off. And side two, I'm going to right click on the side. I should probably go from the same side. So right click and I'm going to export um, and I'm going to call this pot plant side two and hit export. I'm going to turn that off. You can see there's a system to this. So I'm making sure that I get every single part. So the lower rear panel is the next thing to do. So I'm going to right click on the lower rear panel, export as DXF and change that to pot plant and hit export and turn that off don't know what I'm going to call these so I'm going to right click on this one and I'm going to go export as DXF uh, part 6 I'm just going to call it um, uh, pot plant uh, bracket 1 and hit export it's the one on the right there so let's turn that one off and then I'm going to right click on this one and export and it's going to be called pot plant I can't even remember what I call it now um, support 2 okay I've forgotten what I called it because you know I'm so all the parts are gone I'm going to turn them back on now this is all set at three millimeters we can come back and change this if we need to Let's just say, for example, I needed it to be 2.8. I should be able to right click in here or double click in here. Everything goes away because this was done back in history. And I can change this to 2.8 millimeters. Press enter, press tick, and it will recalculate everything and everything should work out fine. If I change it to something big like six millimeters, it still works, which is amazing. Okay, so mine's still gonna work at six millimeters. That's nice to know, which means that if I really need to, to make it strong enough, um, the plant strong enough, I can actually print it out of something that's six millimeters deep uh, because I've designed mine well. Yours might not work out that well, but mine did. So if I needed to, I then right click on and export all those parts again as six millimeters. I might put that in the AI file though. But basically, um, that is how we export our pot plant holder um, ready to put into Illustrator.
In step eight, we now have our DXF files ready to go. So we're gonna set up an Adobe Illustrator cut file in order to complete that task. So I'm in Adobe Illustrator, I'm gonna create a new file. And the new file is going to be, um, uh, I'm gonna create a custom and I'm gonna create it to be, uh, let's just say um, 600 millimeters wide by 400 millimeters, which just happens to be the size of the piece of material that I have sitting next to my computer. It's a nice piece of, um, it's a plywood thing, so it's 600 by 400 millimeters. That's the size of the material I have. That's what I'm gonna try and fit it onto. I should be able to fit it nicely. Make sure it's in millimeters and press create. So now that I've created this file, it will open up for me. I can now go into file and hit place. And in file and place, I can go to my downloads. And for me, it's the last lot that I've downloaded. So that lot there, and I'm gonna hit place. Hang on, I'm gonna hit cancel. Oh, no, it, okay, cancel. Cancel, 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 cancel. Right, I'll do it properly, file, place. Make sure that when you place them, this one's here, that you have show import options ticked. I already did by default, but you won't. So I'm gonna hit place now, and make sure it is scale 100%, one, one millimeters, and press on okay. And okay, you're gonna to have to do this for every part. So it's gonna print this one out first, and that one out second. So I'm gonna just place these randomly. And now I'm gonna try and move them around. So I'm gonna click on this one here. And I'm gonna have, you have to drag it by the path. So actually have your mouse over a line to drag it, like so. I'll bring that one in here. And I'll see if this one doesn't quite fit down here. So I'm gonna move it to here. So this is how much room it's gonna take up on my material. I could probably be a bit more efficient by doing this like so, and moving this up here, move this a little bit across, and I can move this right up, like so. Now, if you click by accident and grab that bit there, it's gonna extrude that up like that, you don't want that. So let's move this now down here, and this is going to be my pot plant holder, um, and that will be, a nice cut file. Now I'm going to make sure that I put my initials on every part that I have because this is a complicated part. I'm going to put my initials in really small writing. So small enough. TIC and I'm going to put 10 PDT. Just so I've got my class on there. Um, and I'm going to, before I do anything else, I've got that there. I press this button here. I'm just gonna move this over here. I should have done one more thing. I'm gonna select all of these things with a by using a drag out box. I'm gonna change their stroke size, all of them, to be 0 0.04 millimeters. Now they're really hard to see, and I'm gonna put my 10 BDT in places where it's not gonna be obvious. So I'm gonna put it down underneath so you won't see it. Um, and I'm going to press Control C and Control V, put it down underneath here too, Control C and Control V. The reason why I'm doing this is because somebody else might cut my parts for me. I'll pretend this is the underside, and Control C, Control V, and if somebody has my parts for me cut, I'll know that they're mine. I'm not gonna label those little ones. Now I'm gonna go um, and click on this one. I'm gonna select, um, so collect, select, the same font family that'll get them all, so they're all selected. And I'm going to go type, and I'm going to go create outlines, and they're now ready to save. So I'm gonna save that, file save. It's gonna save it on my computer. I need to transfer it to USB. I didn't give it a name, so I should call this one pot plant holder and hit uh, save it in my documents in 2022 in 10 PDT and I'm gonna hit save.
So there we go, there's my pot plant holder. It's going to be saved in um, Adobe Illustrator. That's ready to take via USB, press OK on that, to the laser cutter to be cut.